Hey, it's Michelle from MBD Studio. If as a graphic designer, you feel like you've gotten left behind by all these AI tools and you're suddenly supposed to know how they all work, well, this video is for you. We're not talking hype or trends or magic AI prompts. And by the end, you're gonna understand what prompts are, which Photoshop AI tools are gonna to be the most helpful to you as a graphic designer, and whether or not you can use AI images like these in print work. All right, let's get started. Stay tuned to the end. I'll show you how to apply your logo to a real world product like this notebook in seconds. Let's start with the basics. And if you already are familiar with prompting, go ahead and skip to the next chapter. What exactly is a prompt? Well, a prompt is just a natural language description of what you want the AI to create or change. The easiest way to think about this is you're not typing commands, you're directing a scene, like a photo shoot or a movie. A solid prompt usually has three parts. Subject, what's in the image, descriptors, what it's doing, how it looks, and keywords like style, lighting, or mood, time of day. What is an image model? Well, an image model is the AI system doing the work behind the scenes. Each model is trained in its own way, which means they interpret prompts in unique ways, they produce distinct styles, and they excel at different things. Think of them as having different personalities. How should designers think about prompting? You're directing, not typing magic words. Start simple, see what happens, then refine. Most of the time, your first prompt won't be perfect, and that's expected. Prompting is iterative. Patience is part of the workflow. Before we touch any buttons, let's clarify the two big AI tools in Photoshop, generative image and generative fill. We'll go over these in more detail in a moment. Generate image creates a brand new image from scratch. It uses the Firefly model only. It's great for concepts, illustrations, mood boards, early ideation, and stepping out of your usual style. Generative Fill works on an image you already have or can create a new one. You can modify, extend, or replace parts of an image. You can choose from multiple AI models, and it's best for creative edits, narrative styles, modifying looks. If you've ever been stuck with an image, this tool can be your best friend. If you're looking for these tools, you can find both Generate Image and Generative Fill in the contextual taskbar. Once you know which tool to use, everything gets a lot less confusing. Let's look at Generate Image first. This is where Photoshop really helps you learn prompting. What makes it powerful is there's a prompt inspiration library so you can see how other creators came up with their designs. And there's reference images that you can use as well. Think of reference images like this. Style is how it looks and composition is how it's laid out. What makes this great for designers is you can learn prompting by example, you can reverse engineer how prompts are written, you get to experiment with styles you wouldn't normally try, and it gives you three variations to choose from. Now let's move on to generative fill. This is where the AI tools get really helpful. To edit an image with a prompt, you must select the entire artboard first, then enter your prompt in the box. If you don't select the entire artboard first, then it will assume that you want a new image. This one trips me up constantly. Choosing an image model is easy. You'll see multiple models available next to the prompt box in the contextual taskbar. Each one behaves differently. If you don't like the results, try switching models to see the difference. Some models like Firefly 1 and Firefly 3 generate multiple variations automatically, which is super helpful. Here's how editing an image with a prompt works. And this is still real image editing. You can change one specific aspect and still keep everything else intact. A good edit prompt usually calls out what to keep, calls out what to change, defines realism or style level. It's super easy to change a scene, for instance. Enter a prompt that says something like, woman walking down a New York City street. It took my original image and simply changed the environment the woman was in. You're editing, not rebuilding from scratch. Now let's get more precise. Using a selection tool, you can replace, add, or modify just that area with a prompt. You can even add things to an image that weren't there before. This is where AI starts saving real time. Now the remove tool. The remove tool is simple, but powerful. You can select part of your image, select remove from the contextual taskbar, and Photoshop fills the gap intelligently. It's perfect for cleaning up busy scenes and removing distractions. Next is one of my favorite tools, Generative Expand extends images to fit new layouts or aspect ratios. To use Generative Expand, select the Crop tool and drag to your preferred aspect ratio or choose from the presets. 
You can use it without a prompt where Photoshop guesses what belongs there or with a prompt where you expand and add new elements at the same time. You get three variations, it's super practical, and it fits real design workflows. Generative Upscale generates a larger image than your original. There's a few models to choose from. Go to Image, then Generative Upscale. Using the Firefly method was okay, but the Topaz Bloom method really stood out. Now here's the reality. Most AI-generated images in Photoshop are fine for small print, not large format, as you can see here. You have one option when it comes to generating a larger image for print, Topaz Gigapixel, which can deliver higher quality, but it's still not perfect for high-end print. AI helps, but it doesn't break physics. Finally, let's talk about one of the most fun workflows. You can add logos to real-world objects using Generative AI. To do this, import your logo and rasterize it. Select all and then go to Generative Fill. Type in Add this logo to a notebook and select Flux Context Pro as the model. The trick is prompting in stages. First, red logo on white because the logo I imported was red, then prompt to reverse the colors. This is fantastic for fast mockups, client previews, brand exploration, and you get results without manual warping or complex mockups. In Photoshop, it isn't about replacing designers. It's about speeding up exploration, removing tedious steps, and giving you more creative range. If you liked this, here's more videos breaking down the new Photoshop 2026 tools. Don't forget to like and subscribe.